Have you ever felt like despite all your hard work and expertise, opportunities just really aren't coming your way? Most engineers won't tell you this, but your technical skills are only really half the game when it comes to being an engineer. You know what else you need? Networking skills. So Michael from CodeCloud here. Today I'm sharing five networking strategies that accelerated my career beyond my expectations. These aren't your typical hand out your business card kind of tips. They are actionable steps for introverts and extroverts alike. Now I'll explain how this approach has shaped my career and how you can apply these principles to your own journey. And don't forget to stick around till the end because I'll be giving you a list of DevOps communities where you can start building meaningful connections immediately. Like most of us, when I started my career as a DevOps engineer, I thought it was all about mastering technology, tools, scripting, automation, infrastructure. And for a while, I thought that was enough. But then I realized something, no one knew who I was, what I was capable of, or what I had to offer. So I shifted my approach and everything shifted for me as a result. I started networking, but I didn't network in the traditional sense. Being an introvert, I wasn't really into just meeting people randomly. I wasn't attending conferences just to hand out business cards or focus on building a huge list of contacts. Instead, I was just connecting with the people that I was already in contact with. Could be vendors, could be coworkers, and I was just trying to connect with them on a deeper level. So how did I do it? Five ways. One, quality over quantity. Networking to me often feels like a numbers game. But for me, it was always about the quality of those interactions. Instead of seeking out connections with an agenda that could be relatively superficial, I focused on engaging with the people who were right in front of me at the deepest level possible. For instance, I remember having a single meaningful conversation about fitness watches at an event that later led to a multi-million dollar collaborative project. This also resulted in a promotion for me, right? It's like this one moment of sincere conversation, you know, about a watch of anything whether it was at work or in an online community or just through collaboration, can really have a lasting impact. And that's what I focused on. Number two, tried my best to engage in online communities, but from a perspective of adding value, not just being there to take things. One of the easiest way to connect is through online spaces. So, you know, whether it's Reddit, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Slack, even Twitter to a certain degree, known as X, right? You don't need to leave your house to meet others and build relationships, but there is a key here, just like it is with in-person, you've got to engage meaningfully. You've got to give in these communities. For example, by regularly answering questions on say like Stack Overflow, I garnered the attention of engineers and managers who were looking to solve the problems that I was also interested in. So this not only helped them, but it helped me build connections with them unintentionally. And I wasn't just another face in the crowd. I did contribute ideas. I shared my knowledge. I praised people. I redirected people perhaps going in the wrong direction. I basically helped others. This built trust and respect. People saw me as someone who had a valuable perspective and could be sociable and engaged with, and that opened doors to collaborations and even job leads. Number three, give before you take. So this is a little bit of the message that was in too, is that you know when you go to these online communities and go in person, think about giving first. Think about listening, for example, to their problems as a means of kind of understanding their world. And then if they want it, offer help. Sometimes you offer empathy. Sometimes you share knowledge. But oftentimes simply listening and just being attentive to what's going on with the person in front of you and being fully present makes all the difference in the world. I can't tell you how many times past coworker or leader or even a junior engineer that I've engaged with has called me with a challenge. And that same person has come back to me years later with an opportunity simply because I took the time to listen at the time that they were having a problem. This approach, by the way, allowed me to build solid and long lasting relationships, even though they aren't numerous, with people who then wanted to help me in return, which wasn't even my goal. I just wanted to be present. So networking isn't really asking, what can this relationship do for me? Instead, ask yourself, how can I support this person? How can I support myself? How can we support each other? It's a two-way street when you add value, people will seek you out. Number four, attend industry events. So, but don't really stress about the networking. Yes, I know, events are nerve wracking. There's a lot of people here. It can be exhausting, but here's my take. Don't go to events with the pressure to network. You're not there to sell anything. You're not even there to sell yourself. You're not proving your self-worth. It's not on the table. Just focus on having genuine conversations on topics that you are genuinely interested in with people that you meet and are generally interested in you. Those natural interactions at, you know, all things from trade shows to vendor conferences to open source conferences, they are gonna basically open up you up for future opportunities without the stress of kind of like working the room, right? For example, at a conference, I had a casual chat over coffee 
with another attendee. We were just casually chatting basically about the sandwiches and like the difficulty of getting good food at a conference, but also the need for it because you're just relatively ungrounded. Months later, that person then recommended me for a speaking engagement, which was awesome. So it's not just about trying to meet everyone, but just about connecting meaningfully with those around you and those that you meet with. Number five, nurture long-term relationships. Okay, so building connections is one thing, maintaining them is another. And man, is it hard in this day and age. I've learned that an email here, a little text here, hey, you just popped into my head here, even just little things, just reminding people that you're thinking of them, particularly when it's genuine, not for the purpose of maintenance, but for the purpose of connection. So to help me with this, I do sometimes set reminders because, you know, we've got a lot going on and focus is a superpower. And so I'll set calendar reminders to remind me that, you know, today's their birthday, or I'll track LinkedIn and see if it's their work anniversary and just respond. And so that way I can, you know, connect on their achievements or just to catch up. This allows me to stay on their radar in a sincere way. Okay, and here's your bonus. A list of DevOps communities where you can start building those connections today. You can find the link in the download to the description. That's it for the day, and here's the recap. Start your networking journey right now by introducing yourself in the comments below. Share why you successfully connected with others or maybe state a network challenge that you're facing. Let's support each other in this community. And if you found this helpful, hit like and hit subscribe and we'll provide more insights. We'll see you next time.